Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and today we're going to be talking about two very special snakes. This is a Louisiana milk snake, a non-venomous species, and this is a coral snake, an extremely venomous species. And today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to tell the difference between these two snakes. Alright guys, so this is the snake from last week's video. This is an eastern coral snake. What I have here is a little Louisiana milk snake. This is one of the few that I have. Louisiana milk snakes are a very special snake and it's one of my favorite to keep. And uh, you know, this is one of my younger ones that's a similar size to this one and it's also one of my prettiest ones. And that's why I decided to match it up with this snake. Now as you can see, both of these guys have very bright, vibrant red colorations. Now the Scarlet King snake, which is another mimic of the coral snake, has yellow banding, but I've never found a Scarlet King. I would have loved to have compared a coral and a Scarlet King. But for today's video, I'm just using a milk snake as an example of a brightly colored snake here in the United States that people oftentimes confuse for coral snakes. And both of these snakes are actually very rare. Consider yourself lucky if you find either of these snakes. They're not an easy species to find at all. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to put down the Louisiana milk in a little container I've got right here and just talk about the coral snake for a minute and talk about its defining features. Now, coral snakes are an elapid snake as we mentioned in the last video, which means they're not a pit viper, they have short fixed fangs. And this snake has the most potent venom out of any North American snake species, which makes them incredibly dangerous in a setting where they're being handled. However, this snake is very timid, very shy, they don't bite too much, and really, finding this snake is rare, and getting bit by one is even rarer. These guys get mixed up with milk snakes and scarlet kings because of their bright coloration, because they've got the bright red, the bright black, and those bright yellow colorations. However, you can look at this snake's face and its pattern and instantly identify it as a coral snake. Now, what my rule is, if you can't instantly identify the snake as a coral snake, a milk, or a scarlet king, just leave it alone. Because really, I could look at the snake instantly and tell you that's a coral snake, that's a milk snake, just because of seeing pictures of them constantly, which that's the best way to train your brain to recognize these snakes, is to look at pictures of them. But uh, if you can't instantly tell what kind of snake it is, just leave it there. And never pick up a snake that you can't identify, especially a multicolored snake like this. Because snakes like this, if you pick this up and it ends up biting you, while it's rare to die from this snake, they have such a potent venom, it would no matter what, be an extremely rough ride. This is not a snake you want to get bit by. It's got a little blunt, flat head, and it's got that little black nose. Normally their eye will be in the black banding, not the yellow, and the red on the coral snake is pretty distinctly different than that of a milk snake or a scarlet king. The banding on this snake, this is one thing that's used in North America oftentimes to recognize this snake. Look at the banding, look at the patterning, and see how the red bands are touching the yellow bands and the black bands are touching the yellow bands as well. And there's many different ways to say the rhyme, but how I say it is red on black, venom lack, red on yellow, kill a fellow. And you'll see with the Louisiana milk snake in a minute that the white and black bands are touching, whereas these guys have the red touching yellow. And that's the best way to identify the snake if you have no clue about these snake species or how to identify them. Look at the banding. Now this is only for North America. Now, in other parts of the world, there are coral snake species that have completely different banding coloration. So this is really just for the North American coral snakes, and even for our milk snakes, because there's other milk snakes with completely different patterns. I'm only referring to this specific setup that we have in North America with milk snakes, scarlet snakes, scarlet kings, and coral snakes. Now one thing you can see about the snake, look at how good he climbs. They're a really good climbing snake, but they do like to spend most of their time on the ground. And uh, this is just a really special snake, so hopefully I've given you guys enough time to just look at this snake on the stick and just see the patterning. That's what I want you guys to do, is just look at the stare at this snake, pick out features, pick out the details of the snake's design, to where if you see one of these snakes, you'll be able to instantly identify it as a coral snake. Now I'm going to put this guy down. We've actually got this little thing down here. If you look, this little tray with dirt, and I'm just going to set him down right there by his little log. So it's really good that we have this with us. I like to bring something along with us that keeps the animal calm in between filming. So he's comfortable right now, he's burrowed down. And now I got the little 
Louisiana milk snake. Now let's check this out for a minute. You can see the coloration is very different on this snake. Now Louisiana milks, as you can see, have white banding. And there's also a variation, just a minor variation of Louisiana milks, we call a tangerine milk. It will kind of have an orangish tinge to the white bandings, but for the most part you're going to get them with that red, black, and white banding as opposed to yellow. Milk snakes, as many of you know, are a king snake species, which means they eat other snakes. And one thing that both of these snakes share is the appetite to eat other snakes. Both of these snakes are designed to eat other snakes, but in completely different ways. Milk snakes and king snakes wrap around their prey and asphyxiate them, meaning pushes all the air out of their lungs and then swallows them down whole. Coral snakes have a venom designed to kill other snakes. Now this milk snake right here, this would be considered a pretty young one. I would have to guess it's between a year and a half and two years of age. Whereas that coral snake, that's an adult coral snake. Louisiana milk snakes definitely get fatter around than coral snakes, but coral snakes, I would have to say at full length, do get longer than most milk snakes do. But they are pretty similar in size oftentimes when people find them, but milk snakes tend to be a little bit heavier body. But for those of you who don't know, once again, the patterning of this snake, the red banding is touching the black banding, and the white patterning is stuck in between the black bands. And you can also see that the white bands on this snake are much smaller than that of a coral snake's yellow bands. Now if you look at the belly, coral snake's belly patterns, for instance, the yellow and the black and the red, go all the way around it. But the milk snake's pattern gets stopped, and they have a black and white kind of a checkered, they can have different patterns. Some of them will have the pattern and go all the way around. Some of them will have like a checkered pattern. Some of them will have just a plain belly. Some of them will even have kind of like a clear white belly, which is pretty cool to find. But they have a different belly pattern than that of coral snake. Now, most of you aren't gonna go up and pick up the snake and look at the belly pattern to figure that out. I just think it's a pretty cool detail. Now, both of these snakes, you're highly unlikely to see them during the day or even out in the open. Most of the time, you're gonna find them under things or underground or in an oak log or something like that. But oftentimes you'll see coral snakes and scarlet kings on the roads and that's the number one place that people run into this snake. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up with both snakes. As you can see, both gorgeous species of snake. And really, I would not recommend killing either of these snakes if you see them. If you see them, just leave them alone. And uh, really, really, even though this is a venomous snake, it's not one to be very concerned about. If you don't go near it or even pick it up, it's not going to mess with you whatsoever. It's a very shy and timid snake. Both of these snakes are very rare and timid. And uh, I'm glad we got to show you guys both of these snakes today. And hopefully we taught you something new to help you identify both of these snakes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time. And this is why I hold the non-venomous snake and I don't hold the venomous snake because he just bit me because he's kind of a jerk sometimes.